Good evening and welcome back to Chef Mel's Kitchen. So today we are going to be making a game dish. We're going to be making a pheasant casserole. Now I think looking at my channel, I don't think I've done any game recipes yet, um, looking back. And um, that's a crying shame because I absolutely love game. Um, whether it's feathered game, which is, we're talking our pheasants, our partridge, our grouse, our guinea fowl, or whether we're talking our furred game, which is like venison and boar and stuff like that. Venison being my favourite meat, actually, so I'm, I must do a recipe on that at some point. But pheasant is the focus today. Now, I was very lucky enough, I know, so suddenly Chef Mel's gone all posh. Um, I've been very lucky that the, the lecturer who I work with at college um, very kindly gave me, um, for free as well, and I, I never say no to free food, <laughs> um, gave me one partridge and two pheasants, and they were whole. As in we're talking, you know, heads on, feet on, feathers, everything. And so what I've been doing is, um, obviously I, I got rid of the head and the feet, I plucked the feathers off, I gutted them until I ended up with three carcasses. Now, I would have shown you that in steps, but I do realise I have a fair few vegetarian and vegan followers on the channel and I don't think they'd appreciate it all that much, um, you know, seeing the whole animals. Although, interestingly enough, I think, you know, using all of an animal is somewhat connected to the whole vegetarian vegan ideal because um you know if a, if a, an animal has given its life to you it's given its life to you to, for you to have a nice dinner it seems a crying shame it seems a little bit of a sin to throw away bits of bits of it because you know that that animal was given its life for you to have a yummy dinner so i think it's important that you use all of it um in chefing we call that nose to tail eating um, which means you use every part of the animal. So as well as so as well as showing you how to do a pheasant casserole, um, I'm also going to be showing you how to make a stock out of the carcass, as well. Um, again, you know, because some people wonder, you know, sort of home cooks wonder, why is it that what I make at home just sometimes just doesn't taste as good as what you get in the restaurants? You know, the sauces and the soups and things. And one of those cheeky little tricks is that our chefs do is the fact that a lot of the time. We simply, we make our own stock. And it's that delicious homemade stock, um, which a lot of home cooks will already do when they do a roast, but it's that homemade stock that just elevates, so, you know, makes it bigger, elevates that, that sauce, that soup, that stew, brings it from a, from a 10 into an 11. You know, as they'd say in Spinal Tap, it goes to 11. A positively cornucopia of gorgeous autumnal produce. And really, I must admit, I'm using this as a little bit of a use up as well. I've got lots of sort of little odds and ends that I want to turn into today's dish. But that's what's fabulous about a stew or a casserole. You know, you can put whatever, um, whatever sort of ingredients you have little bits and bobs of and turn it into a delicious meal. So first of all, for the stock. So out of this pheasant, the other pheasant I pot roasted whole, but um, this pheasant, um, I got all the meat off it. So um, as a small-ish pheasant, I managed to get about 350 grams of diced pheasant, which I think would feed, you know, two people, sort of three, depending on how much veg you sort of add and how you bulk it up and everything, but two to three, really. So that's the 350 grams of pheasant for the um, the casserole. But this is the carcass, and we'll talk about the stock first. So I'm going to have to really make a really, really basic game stock. So I've got my carcass there. Um, I've got sort of an old sad looking carrot, which I'll just literally, I don't even need to peel it, just dice it up. I've got half an onion, about half a teaspoon of garlic granules and um, garlic salt, um, a bay leaf and some black peppercorns, um, black pepper. And I'll probably put a little bit of salt in there with 1.2 liters of water, but I'll show you how we make the stock in a minute. So that's the stock. I'm also gonna add the trimmings from the celery. So all these lovely leaves, don't throw those leaves away, there's still flavor in them leaves. So I'm gonna be trimming the um, the sort of ends of the celery and using the main celery in the stew, but then using the, the trimmings for the stock. And that's what professional chefs do. You know, you save the peelings and the odd bits and bobs and chuck it into a stock and then you use the main veg for the main event. So, um, so when it comes to the main event, um, you'll need a few tablespoons of olive oil uh, you'll need your pheasant, so I think it's about 350 grams of diced pheasant. Uh, you'll need a tablespoon of flour with some salt and pepper because we're going to coat that pheasant in the flour, salt and pepper and brown it off first as we often do with stews. Um, you'll need one red onion, uh, one tablespoon of tomato puree, um, the celery stalk sort of chopped up. I've got, it's probably about a quarter, so 250 grams of peeled diced butternut squash. I know I've got a bit squash crazy lately but that's because I'm growing them so I've got loads of them. 
Um, that'll end soon, I suppose, now we've got frost. Uh, a tin of chopped tomatoes. Uh, 150 ml, so like a small glass of red wine. I've used, use a nice, strong, uh, deep red wine. I've used a Malbec here. Um, it's good to pair wines to what you're cooking with. Um, you, and I think it was Keith Floyd that said, never cook with something that you wouldn't drink. You know, don't just choose really poor quality wine because it, otherwise it will reflect on the dish. I mean, don't use something that's like for 20 quid a bottle, but you know, a bit of, um, bit of leeway there. I've got two rather large mushrooms, which I'm going to quarter. Um, I've got half, I've got half a teaspoon of, I'll use half a teaspoon of dried mixed herbs, um, a finely diced green chilli, um, which I'll remove the seeds of. I just want the flavour of the chilli, I don't want the heat. Um, oh, I'll use one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, and of course I will use the game stock that I make in a minute. And this is an interest, oh yes, two stalks of uh, rosemary as well, fresh rosemary. Um, sort of taken off the stalks and dice. Now, this is an interesting ingredient. So I promise Mel hasn't finally lost it. She hasn't finally lost her marble. She hasn't started using rat droppings in her, in her cooking. These are called black garlic. Now, very kindly enough as a sort of early birthday present, um, my friend, thank you, Nick, my friend got me a nice hamper of like black garlic products. And it's black, it's garlic that's been um, fermented that's been kind of cured until it goes black and it loses its harshness. Apparently it doesn't give you garlic breath as well, which is a bonus. Um, but it's got a really deep, rich umami flavor, which I spoke to my apprentices about. So it's kind of like an Italian style. So Italian English fusion casserole. So I've got 1.2 liters of water. I've got all my trimmings from my celery. I've got a small carrot, um, peel left on, stalks left on, everything diced up. Um, I've got half a white onion, diced. Again, it, it, don't worry about it being neat and tidy. It can be roughly done. We call that a mirepoix in the trade. If you want to get posh in French, that's what we call it. We got the we got the I was about to call it a phoenix. Then we got the pheasant, we got the pheasant carcass um, in there. We've got uh, the garlic salt, half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of regular salt, some pepper, and a bay leaf. And what that's going to do, I'm going to bring it to the boil, and then I'm going to allow it to simmer for half an hour, so it's quite a quick stock. Um, once it's simmered for half an hour, drain it, reserving the liquid. So I've strained my stock and actually ended up with 700 milliliters, so that's how much we'll use in the recipe, 700 milliliters of really tasty um, blonde game stock. By blonde, I don't mean, you know, highlights, you know, all that sort of stuff, I mean, <laughs> blonde means oh, I didn't brown the bones before. So if I brown the bones, just like with the beef stock, if I browned it, it would be a brown stock, but this is a blonde or pale stock. So I've got my pheasant here, and I've got a tablespoon of um, just, just normal, normal plain flour with some salt and pepper added. And I'm just going to uh, I'm, I'm, I've done this before with casserole dishes, which I've shown you in other videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to coat that pheasant um, in that oil, in that, um, not oil, um, flour, salt and pepper. And then once I've got a hand free, and then I'm going to brown that off. If you're wondering what those little dark marks are, is I've used some dripping left over from a roast as well. So it was about a tablespoon of dripping and a tablespoon of oil. That's the reason why there's some funny little dark marks. Um, we'll brown it off in two batches. So I'll put half the pheasant in now. That pheasant coated in the in the um, flour, salt and pepper. Um, and I'll brown that off for about five minutes, put it to my bowl, and then brown the second batch. So to that still hot pan, I've browned my meat. Oh, it's got all steamy in here. I'm gonna add my mirepoix of veg. So that's, um, so there's some oil in there already. Um, from the meat, red onion, butternut squash, celery, and three cloves of black garlic. So normally a mirepoix would be um, white onion, celery, and carrot, but I'm using red onion, butternut squash, and celery because that's all I have. But you know, use whatever you have. And um, we're going to brown that or colour it for about five minutes. So now you want to add your two big mushrooms, which actually I've cut into six pieces because they're quite big. Um, half a green chilli seeded and diced and your rosemary. That goes in now and you're going to cook that for a further five minutes. So now you need to add your 150ml red wine, a tablespoon of tomato puree, a tablespoon of balsamic and a quarter of a teaspoon of mixed herbs, dried mixed herbs. That goes in now and you just want to bubble it up for about two minutes. Now you need to add your game stock 
course, if you don't have a carcass and you've just got diced meat, just use um, chicken stock or beef stock. It doesn't make much odds. Um, 700 ml stock, one tin of chopped tomatoes, and then you reintroduce your lovely browned pheasant. And what you need to do, uh, bring that to the boil, and then you need to simmer it low and slow. This is a casserole, this is a stew, remember? So low and slow for an hour and 20 minutes. So the casserole has been stewing for one hour, 20 minutes. I've been stirring it every so often, get sort of my eye on it. And if you can see the um, consistency and the texture of that, it's beautifully thickened, really nice. Um, if you feel like it's a bit too thin, then you know what, um, reduce it down for another 10, 15 minutes. If it's too thick, add a little bit more stock. But at this point, I'm happy with the consistency, so I'm just gonna double check the seasoning, because that's really important. Oh, wow. Okay, the flavour is so intense. Um, I'm happy with the salt, sugar, pepper levels of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that aside now um, it's ready for serving, but as I've told you about stews and casseroles and stuff, um, they're really nice if you serve them like on another day. So um, I'm probably going to serve that tomorrow and reheat it.